What if I told you I can teach millennials how to love and protect Judaism, and in doing so, find value and happiness in their lives? I can. Or should I say Judaism can? I've always had the ability to be a chameleon. I didn't ask to be like this. I was just oddly born with it. And over time, I cultivated the ability to hone it and to use it to my advantage. When I was younger, being a chameleon was hard. I've always had difficult hair. It's unruly and thin. As a result, my hairstyles would often change. Because of this, nobody would ever recognize me. What you see on my head now are hair extensions. I spent my whole childhood and preteens, and even into my 20s and 30s having to introduce and reintroduce myself to the same people all the time. It used to really bother me. I was also a savvy dresser in those days, right off Madison Avenue. And I had worked in the entertainment industry and knew what it was to have a look and I desperately wanted one. I was also cute and blonde and had money, and people stereotyped and misjudged me. They assumed I wasn't smart, and they didn't take me seriously. They didn't take the time to listen to me or get to know me. But I was listening, and I was watching everyone. Over time, I learned I could be any person that someone needed me to be. I didn't plan it or carefully craft it. But eventually, in my early 40s, I began to hang out in spaces and places with millennials, people that thought I was just like them. I had taken a keen interest in this generation group because I was in the philanthropic business of wanting to help millennials connect to a Judaism I found so meaningful and guided my own life. I learned to look like them, talk like them, and become the best versions of themselves. I took two years to study millennials and figure out who they were, how they thought, what drove them, where they hang out, and what hours of the day they do what. I studied their habits. I joined in with them at Coachella, at Burning Man, at Bottle Rock, at Summit, at South By, and all sorts of other different venues and conferences. I became a rebooter, and even now, I've done an Eli talk. <laughs> I kind of was a spy on the hunt for what made them so unique and different that everyone was writing articles about them and labeling them and even fearing them. I even started to dress like them. Fortunately, I look good for 50, and I fit in. <laughs> Never knew that was me funny. Millennials are curious. <laughs> Millennials are curious without any walls or boundaries. They are expressive by design. They are opinionated, yet often uninformed. They like food, and they really, really like to drink. They are resourceful the way Israelis were in the founding of the state. They are good at being in teams, but often fail in individual relationships. Yes, they have egos. They love music and media and know how to tap into it, the best of it and the worst of it. They know how to use it and abuse it. They are scrappy and unforgiving, connected and disconnected all at the same time at the highest levels. They are artistic in all ways. They are refreshing, yet rarely put themselves in someone else's shoes. They are stubborn, they are lonely, they are sad. They are desperately looking for sacred, for meaning, and for purpose in their lives, and they can't find it. What did I learn from them? I learned how to use their tools. I learned how to communicate with them on the platforms that guide their lives, like Twitter and Snapchat and Viber and Slack and WhatsApp, and let's not forget Instagram. I eventually received and read all of my news on my phone. I was determined to be phone first at all cost. I don't wear a watch. I learned how to text with two hands, and I quickly learned to carry a backpack. I learned to talk like them and eat like them and became vegan. <laughs> I learned about relationships, the thin ones and the truly deep ones. I learned to decipher when a connection was someone that was weak or someone was strong. 
I learned not to be scared. I learned not to have to be perfect all the time. I learned that they are easily convinced to try something new if it was presented in a way that conforms to their belief system and the creed of all things millennial. I completely immersed myself into being a millennial so I could teach them how to want Judaism. It's like everything else, packaging. I learned that if packaged right, I could sell them Judaism and its values. I could have them wanting it more and more and more in their lives. I could make it interesting because I now knew what they find interesting. See, I was raised with a strong commitment to Judaism and the rhythms of Jewish life. I learned this through the umbilical cord from my parents. They are both extraordinary teachers. In high school at Eula in Los Angeles, the Yeshiva University, I was exposed to the juxtaposition of orthodoxy and secular. I learned how to bring the two together. I carry the gift of Judaism around with me every day. It is the lens by which I see everything through. I realized then that I could share this gift with others. Millennials apply a tech philosophy mindset to whatever they do. They have a smart, disruptive system by which they operate. I decided to coin my sharing as disruptive funding of knowledge. So in my 40s, I started to create events and form partnerships with secular influencers who had no Jewish content and could take my knowledge and lay it into their platforms and their events and make them meaningfully Jewish. I funded grassroots events like the Passover Seder with Tribe in Los Angeles and New York, and I hosted Shabbat dinners at Burning Man and hosted over 1,000 Shabbat dinners for millennials where I created a template for giving a drosh and expected them to deliver one. I planned events that resonated for them like a 1 a.m. Torah study class so that after they left the clubs, they had a little Torah before turning in. I brought Jewish content for them front and center. I found ways to bring meaningful Jewish moments to millennials. I, th I taught them to allow the mezuzah to separate the outside space from the sacred space of the home. I taught them that they needed Shabbat and helped them to rediscover it in ways they had never imagined possible. I taught them to be present and find meaning in their hiking and biking by understanding the Jews and the slave mindset while wandering in the desert. I helped them to transmit the wisdom of Torah and Judaism to their everyday lives. I expected them to help me make Judaism go viral and to download its hard drive into their disruptive systems. I stand at the intersection between their secular moments and what Judaism brings to the table. I'm personally unapologetically Jewish about wanting a fully rich, meaningful life, and they deserve how to live it too. As members of JFN, we are not the teachers. We are the students that are behind in class. I fund the risky, smart projects and ideas, and I create the ones I don't find. We must go back to the basic mindset of Judaism and offer small bites at a time. My legacy is passing down the gift of Jewish knowledge to the millennial generation by delivering it differently. The older generation often thinks of millennials as flighty and flaky. They are not. Millennials often think of Judaism as foreign, archaic, and not meaningful. It is not. Judaism has always reinvented itself to meet the needs of every generation. The Torah is a living, breathing text that has evolved with every generation. My legacy, my passion, my mindset is that millennials and Judaism can be and should be a natural fit together. We just need to stop treating millennials like dumb blondes and allow Judaism to be the chameleon that it has been for thousands of years not with the less than mindset, but with the fullness and richness and joy that both millennials and Judaism deserves. Thank you.